Hey everybody. So recently I had a problem with one coral in particular that kind of bummed me out. Well, at Reef Palooza, I picked it up again. I pulled the trigger on it, put it in my system. You want to know which one it is? Well, let's head on over to the tank because it's been two weeks since the last tank update. So let's get to it. Okay, everyone, so this week's update, I'm going to just go through the tank and uh, give you an overview of what's going on. It's been two weeks since the last update. Uh, I'm going to start over on the left-hand side of the tank with the gold and green and purple candy canes. Since I moved them here, I thought for sure I was going to have problems with them because they don't take well to being moved. But as you can see, since they were moved, um, they've really um, settled in and they do like where they are now. Now, right next to them, uh, you'll see the behind the molly. This is the Acan Barabanki that I have, and um, it's doing really good since I moved it out from underneath the shade where it was. It's colored up a whole lot, and that one head um, that you see uh, right there is really showing off. I'm hopeful that will sprout another head. Now the orange rainbow A cans I moved over here, they are not doing as well as the others. I'll show you in a second the difference between them being out in full light and what happens when you put them in sort of a shaded spot. Here they are in the shaded spot. You can see a lot of them have their sweepers out looking for food and they are really wide open. And I think I can only contribute that to um, the difference in light in between the two areas. The A cans in general are really doing fantastic, and the only um, thing I could attribute this to is the fact the feeding regimen that they're on, uh, besides water conditions and everything else, uh, the feeding regimen that they're on is basically what I do is the bigger ones will get mysis, where the smaller ones, um, like this one here and these two right here, get straight reefroids and they eat it like crazy and as you can see by these two alone they were very small when i first got them but they are sprouting new heads every day and getting quite large so no complaints with that and the roids work the symphelia wilsoni is really doing well uh, eating mysis like a champ and growing right now it's uh in because the lights i was fooling around with them so got a little irritated and sucked in on me um also the neon green favia as well as the christmas night before christmas favia and the buttons uh, scoli are really doing awesome and growing and as you can see if you go back and compare between the update two weeks ago you'll see a big change between this one and the one from two weeks ago now to one of the show pieces in the tank right here is my trachea it's a rainbow trachea i picked up from um, Covey Corals and it's huge. It's about the size of a, a tea saucer and about almost two inches or about one and a half, one and three quarter inches off the sand bed. It really shines up at night. It eats like crazy. It has two mounts which, which I didn't expect. Uh, I thought they only had one but this has two and it takes in mysis like crazy. So uh, this is definitely one of my favorite corals of the bunch. Now in the back you'll see the Zoantha Garden is really doing well and the cat's eyes and you can see up here the Rastas and the Worldwide Corals Pallies are really taking off in this area of the tank as well as um, surprisingly um, right in the back there you'll see the Eagle Eyes. I can never keep I could never keep eagle eyes in my tank. And now all of a sudden, I guess they decided to grow. So as far as zoanthids are concerned, I'm really thrilled about the way they're growing in my tank. There is some missing and I will show you them in a, in a few seconds. Uh, just let's go through the Hollywood Stunner Chalice really doing well on the um, overflow. As you can see here, the two plates are starting to grow over each other. The one on the bottom continues to grow even though it's being shaded. So it's an interesting um, learning experience with this coral 
to see how the difference is between uh, the one getting all the light and this one getting all the shade. Up above it is the purple digi, the red digi, and a little piece, you can see right there in the center of top of that red setosa coral. Uh, they're filling out um, this section of overflow and doing exactly what I wanted them to do from the beginning, and that is basically make this ugly overflow look really nice. Moving across the tank, you can see the, the red Montipora and uh, the red Setosa are really doing well. The red Setosa was showing some signs of bleaching. And now this is one thing that I want to demonstrate here is when I saw the bleaching going on, you could see a little bit of it right there. When I first saw this going on, before you make a jump and see something like this going on and you decide to, to jump the gun and, and start doing some crazy stuff, Take a look around and see what's going on with the other corals. What I did is I took a look and I noticed um, you could tell uh, the red Monte Cap has moved now. And I moved that because the way it was growing was shading the red Setosa and causing that bleach to happen. So hopefully now that it's sitting out in the direct light, it'll polyp over that white spot and grow out like normal. The Jason Fox Barney Coral is really doing well. Uh, it's liking being the top of the tank. It's it's right in the sun as far as the lights are concerned I call it sun, but it's lights It's encrusted now over that rock and is part of it and you can see right here There is a frag and Rico that will be yours as soon as I can get it out to you I did promise this to Rico from Rico's reef tank and I uh, It's it's here. I just got to get it out to you over in this section, um, you can see right in the back here, if I can get this to focus, are the Sunny D's. Um, the Sunny D's are now part of the top rock, along with the Fiji fires, are gonna be part of the zoanthids that now reside up on this rock. And, and yes, you are seeing correct, I do have utter chaos back in my tank. I picked these up from Tank Breakers at uh, Reef of Palooza that was $25 for that frag and there's four polyps on it. I paid $25 for one polyp, so it just goes to show you, you can find bargains at the swaps. And it's become my favorite place to pick up coral. Now in the Euphelia section, everything's doing well uh, with the exception of the same piece that wasn't doing well last time. You can see right here the frog spawn, my original frog spawn, that blob right in the center is actually one of the heads that is inflated because I think it's being shaded a lot by the one above it, but also I'm hopeful that that's a sign that that may be ready to split. But you can see also the one above it shading it and there's Pinky in the middle who's totally uh, come back to its full health and also there's a purple, a green and purple tip frog spawn in the back that's really doing awesomely, as well as the green and purple tip torch. This, however, is the one that's doing the worst. This is the purple tip, tor the purple torch from Billy Pipes. The Zosenthelli completely bailed out of this. It has not died, and it still stays the same, but I can't figure out why it's doing it. Uh, basically, I moved it from the top of the rock structure to the middle, to let it sit here and kind of recoup. So we'll see how that does in the weeks and months ahead. Moving down, here are the, here are the red jawbreaker mushrooms. They settled in, they've made a home on this rock now. And I'm looking forward to them kind of uh, basically filling out this whole rock. I see this bright red piece on here. That could be just coralline, but I'm hopeful that that's a piece of the mushroom and it's gonna grow out to a new baby. As far as all the fish are concerned, everybody's doing well. The powder blue tang is really doing well. It's big and fat, still the boss of the tank, and also the main reason why I can't put any more fish in my tank. Uh, but I'm hopeful that in the future, when I go into a bigger build, he'll calm down a little bit because he will be quarantined uh, alone and basically, um, put in the tank very last. So we'll see what happens with that. Across the tank, you could just make out her tail. The, 
the clownfish are being clowns, and but they're what they're doing right now is making cleaning up a spot, and they have eggs under there. It's kind of hard to see them, and they're not cooperating at all. But there he is. That's where they lay their eggs, and they give me no problems. You can just make out right here um, two of the blue-eyed cardinals that are in the tank. That's where they spend their day behind the rock and also in the rock until food comes out and then they go crazy. But they're really doing well and getting bigger. Right there's the yellow tang grazing on the rock and my oldest fish is basically fatter than ever and a horse. He eats really well so no real fear of anything going on with him. And like I said, he is my oldest fish so I'm pretty proud of how far he's come down the road with me. Uh, right there are the two mollies and if they would focus, there we go. Um, that's all they do during the day. They've kind of uh, stopped beating each other up. They just swim with each other and take it easy around the tank and do what they do. So that's basically it for an update for this week. Uh, coming up, uh, we'll have some more episodes. I am planning some future things that um, kind of go away from what the channel was doing. We may have a live stream uh, built in at some point, but I'll let you uh, know about that when it happens. If you're a new subscriber to the channel, please uh, feel free to, uh, to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified when more videos come out. And uh, always like, share, and comment, as everybody says. If you have a question, just drop a line down below. I look forward to your comments and I love reading them. So, until next time, as I end every video, this is Scott, and I will see you soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.